Grace and peace, people of Roche Park. We're so glad to join you and have you join us as we continue to study God's Word with this weekly Bible study. We just finished the book of James, and so this week we begin a new Bible study. And, and if you've been with us uh, throughout these studies, you know that we've been going through the New Testament. Uh, particularly, we've been going through some of Paul's letters. But now we're going to pause, and we're going to go all the way back to the Old Testament. And we're going to go to a pretty small book. It's only a handful of pages in my Bible, but it's the book of Ruth. And so Ruth is a, is a powerful story of, of tragedy, of loss, but also a story of tremendous hope and love and friendship and loyalty. There's only four chapters, and so again, we're going to go a chapter a week, and so I'd invite you to grab a Bible, grab a journal if you need to. Um, if you'd like to look at an overview of the entire book of Ruth, you can follow the link below. That will give you a, a helpful overview of the entire chapter as well as some insights. The form for this time together is I'm going to read Ruth chapter 1. And then again, I'm going to put up some questions at the end, and I'd invite you to pause the video at that time and pray over those questions. Now, the difference between this study and perhaps some of our previous studies is that in our previous studies, we were reading a letter. In the book of Ruth, we're reading a story. And so the, the, the questions and the narrative is a little different. And so I'd invite you to read the story again, to read Ruth chapter 1 again, and to pray over it and to chew on it and to allow God to speak to you through Ruth chapter 1. But before we do that, would you pray with me? God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask that you would speak to us now through this word, that it might remain forever in our hearts, that it might be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and that it might inspire us to serve into your kingdom. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Again, grab a Bible, grab a journal, grab a pen, whatever you need, and let's dive into God's word. Hear now a word of the Lord from Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Mahlon and Kilian. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These Two sons took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Mahlon and Kilian also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept again. 
Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law, Orpah, has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I kind of want to run through this in a general sense, just to give you a, a sense of, of the power of this chapter. So right off the bat, in verse 1, in the days when the judges ruled, that sentence alone is telling us, it's reminding us of the dark and difficult times that the current culture was. Ruth follows the book of Judges. And so it's reminding you, it's pointing you back that during this time, this tremendously dark and difficult time, there was more pain. Again, consider... Naomi's husband has died, and now her two sons have died. So there she is with her, her two daughters-in-law, which come from their own families and their own backgrounds and their own cultures, and now they're hungry. There's a famine. And so Naomi decides to leave, and so she, she says to her two daughters-in-law, you can go back. Go back to your families. Go back to your, to your mother's house. Go back to your own cultures and your own traditions and your own God. It's okay. I thank you for loving me and loving my sons. But it's okay. You can leave. And so Orpah does. Orpah leaves. But Ruth clings to Naomi. And this is extremely important. Because in this biblical culture, Without a husband, a widow would have nothing to cling to. Ruth is now signing up for a life of being a foreigner and being a widow. She would be on the outskirts of society. So it is tremendously powerful when Ruth hears a person of authority, her mother-in-law, say you need to leave. But Ruth, with determination and with courage, says, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if, e if even death parts me from you. Ruth is deeply loyal to Naomi. Ruth clings to her through love. And so, though chapter 1 begins on this painful note, this painful note of, of loss, of departure, of famine, of the time when the judges ruled, even though it starts off on this, this tremendously uh, tragic note. Chapter 1 ends and begins to transition and lays the foundation for a story of tremendous hope and friendship and love and loyalty that will change the world. And so again, thanks so much for joining us. 
The, the book of Ruth is one of my favorite books in all of the Bible. And so I look forward to going through it with you. In just a minute, there's going to be some questions up on, uh, on a screen. And I'd, imagine, I'd invite you to pause during that time. And if those questions are helpful, great. Go through them, uh, write them down, answer them, study them, pray over them. But perhaps it's more helpful for you to just read chapter 1 again and to allow God to speak to you. We're excited to go through this book with you because we know that when we're drawn closer to each other through the Word of God, we'll be drawn closer to the Word living, who is God. Grace and peace, and we hope to see you soon.